okay sir so uh, i hope i am uh, audible to all yes yes first half yeah so uh, 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 let me welcome at the outset all the participants who have given us an overwhelming response of uh, of this course uh, on online course on the overview of micro irrigation systems and uh, we are i'm also welcoming the uh, our president uh, dr felix renders uh to this uh, to this seminar and also mr rajendra kumar jain chairman central water commission and mr sk haldar member water planning and projects uh, engineer kharia chief engineer natural water academy dr soman and dr uh, ramdas who are our collaborative uh, knowledge partners in a, as a part of our, uh, organizing of this course so at the outset it is it is great pleasure to welcome you all Uh, to this uh, webinar and the launch of the course, uh, we have, uh, with the collaboration of the National Water Academy, Jain Irrigation Systems in Nekafin, uh, we have been able to put in a very vital and a very important uh, seminar in which uh, in uh, the web course in which we have been able to cover almost every aspect of micro irrigation systems that is starting from the planning for water, going into the systems design. how to operate and maintain the system what are the basic science and philosophy behind the agronomy and uh, the water dynamics which are which are required for understanding the micro irrigation uh, systems and at the end we will also be discussing in the course about the financing models that are that are being practiced as well as various other social aspects that are important for implementing a micro irrigation system because the micro irrigation systems are are the very very key of our water use efficiency program not only that they also have a very important role to play in providing the sustainable outputs with a limited amount of water and limited amount of resources and for that matter it is a it's a very very important technology that icid along with other knowledge partners would like to propagate around the world and would like to be a nodal uh, person uh, a nodal agency around the world to promote our our aim of alleviating the rural poverty through the agriculture water management so i i briefly i, I welcome all of you once again and uh, now i would uh, request uh, uh, mr rajendra kumar jain chairman cwc to provide his uh, his remarks at the inauguration of the course thank you very much sir uh, so uh, respected president icid engineer felix uh, renders respected secretary general icid engineer ab pandya sir my colleague sri sk elder member cwc sri ashok harya chief engineer missile water academy industry representatives i hope they have joined Dr. P. Soman from Jainidi and Engineer Ramdas Batalwar from Netafim. It is my pleasure to get this opportunity to interact with you all at such an important occasion. We are launching international certificate course for micro irrigation systems in e-learning mode, jointly with ICID. Joining of the industry representatives also with the initiative is. most is is very much welcome we all know that india is a water deficit country we have to sustain about 18% of world's population with just 4% of renewable water resources the spatial and temporal variation in water availability makes the water scarcity even worse the irrigation is the largest water user sector which consumes about 80% of water in spite of water scarcity irrigation water use efficiency has remained much lower than the desirable levels due to various reasons in our country it is well known that water use efficiency may be significantly increased the use of micro irrigation techniques however although irrigation has increased significantly over the years the coverage under micro irrigation has remained abysmally low Area under drip irrigation was only about 1,500 hectares in 
and uh, that increased uh, to about half a million hectare in 2002 but was but it was still only a fraction less than 1% of the country keeping in view the importance of micro irrigation in efficient water utilization of water, uh, in efficient utilization of water resources, the government of india constituted a task force on micro irrigation in 2003 under the chairmanship of uh, none other than the then chief minister of andhra pradesh sri chandra babu naidu so it is it is very rare that uh, uh, any such task is given that such an highest level degree so sri naidu has the reputation of being very progressive and technology uh, savvy agriculture ministers of major states that is rajasthan was included in the task force as members among others and chairman of the irrigation was appointed a special inquiry the task force was constituted to suggest strategies to expand the coverage under micro irrigation in the country suggest institutional and technical technological support needed and suggest measures so that identified benefits reach the targeted group intended benefits reach the targeted group by then coverage under micro irrigation was only about 1.2 million hectare that is uh, half a million hectare under drip and 0.7 million hectare under sprinkler but the task force identified that there was potential to cover about 70 million hectare under micro irrigation in the country the task force uh, submitted its report in january 2004 they cover uh, all the aspects in very detail and they did a very excellent job they suggested various measures ranging from needed investments tax incentives credit support uh, to farmers technological support needed institutional mechanism at grassroots level to provide service support at local level through young graduates or trained farmers development of entrepreneurship at village level for providing technical guidance to farmers as and when needed etc the government of india apart from above the government of india had initiated a scheme to support micro irrigation way back 1992 and has been running various schemes to support the same since then agriculture department of government of india is presently implementing per drop more crop program under which subsidy of 45 to 55 percent is provided to farmers depending upon the uh, uh, size of farmers or their uh, their uh, uh, social status. Uh, by this, this subsidy is provided by the central government. And apart from that, that subsidy is propped up by the state governments also, in, in, uh, in case of some of the states. The government has approved dedicated micro-irrigation fund also with National Bank of, for Agriculture and Rural Development, in short we call it NABAD, with an initial corpus of about 50,000 million rupees. In US dollars, it works out to about 667 million US dollars. However, in spite of all these efforts, coverage of micro irrigation has not gained the desired pace. Under the scheme of per drop, more drop, area of about 4.7 million hectare only has been covered in last five years. Out of potential of about 70 million hectare identified by task force, the coverage so far is only about 15 percent and where we have still to go a long way the main reasons for low coverage of micro irrigation are lack of motivation to save water when water charges are highly subsidized and also lack of financial and technical capabilities of farmers who are mostly small and marginal with small land holdings there are few examples of micro irrigation being implemented in a big way in our country and such initiatives are uh, still generating a lot of curiosity and excitement. I will give example of Ramthal uh, lift irrigation project of Karnataka in which micro irrigation is being implemented in about 24,000 hectare area with full governmental support with participation of Jain irrigation and Natafim in equal areas. The project has generated a lot of curiosity and has been visited by large number of visitors, including Honorable Union Minister of the State and Secretary of Water Resources, including myself. The point which I want to make is that micro irrigation still has not become way of life. And it is still a uh, thing of curiosity, it is generating a lot of curiosity. 
so it has to become a way of life when it becomes normal actually it does not have any uh, curiosity factor and all that actually so it should become way of life actually so with huge potential there should have been thriving industry in this field but uh, it is not so launching of this course on micro irrigation is a milestone which will help in developing technical capabilities at all levels in this field and is an attempt to fill fill up this gap at least association with icid will ensure exposure of participants to best global practices the joining of jain irrigation and neta team who are major private players in this sector is most welcome as with their experience they will be able to guide the contents and help in identification of target groups of this uh, training course in fact they are the uh, main uh, experience holder main stakeholders at least who can who can tell us about the gap in this field and then we can uh, try to fill up that gap so i wish all the success to this great initiative thank you very much uh, thank you mr jain and uh, you you provided a very good overview of the progress that is being made in the in the area of micro irrigation in country and uh, now i would uh, request uh, engineer sk handa from member water planning pwc to give his brief uh, remarks yeah respected uh, uh, engineer felix rendis uh, president uh, icid uh, shri pandya ji shri rk jain sahab chairman central water commission and uh, the representative of uh, netta film and uh, jain irrigation and participants it is really a great pleasure for me to participate in this inaugural uh, you know webinar on uh, micro irrigation so basically in indian context you know india is a country with you know 1/6 of world's population but we have only you know 4% of world's water fresh water resources available we receive about 4 4000 billion bcm of uh, precipitation and out of that what we assessment uh, we have made that uh, roughly about uh, 2000 bcm of water is uh, you know our basin wise availability out of that the utilizable water is uh, what we have assessed is about 1137 bcm of which 690 bcm is surface water and 447 bcm is ground water our consumption presently consumption you know uh, uh, by the year 2025 and 2050 are projected to be 843 bcm and 1180 bcm so by 24 by 2050 in fact whatever you know uh, water will be there utilizable water will be there that will match with our demand and thereafter we may be a you know water stress kind of situation irrigation sector is the largest consumer of water what we have you know worked out is the agriculture sector and livestock that consumes more than 90% of you know all water that is diverted uh, for uh, that is used in india so therefore our irrigation system is again there is a issue that uh, we don't have a efficient irrigation system where you know the normal practice the irrigation efficiency is 60 70 in case the irrigation efficiency only 35 to 40% so at one place we are using 90% of our available water resources for irrigation and livestock and all those things and with a very very poor irrigation efficiency you know lot lot of water can be saved if we can put this irrigation water to efficient use and in this way micro irrigation is a is a technique is a is a is a technique where you know we can put uh, our uh, irrigation efficiency we can improve tremendously you know national mission for uh, water that that provides that we should increase our irrigation efficiency by at least 20% so in that way you know government of india is planning and they are going ahead you know to go ahead with micro irrigation in as uh, as as big area as possible we have identified that roughly about the potential micro irrigation potential in india is 70.5 million hectare and so far by the year about 2015 we have extended uh, uh, mi facility in an area of about 7 uh, million hectares and in last 5 years last 4 and 5 years roughly about 4.5 mha uh, million hectare area additional potential has been created so thus by end of 2019 the total micro irrigation potential created is roughly about 11.5 uh, million hectares government of india has also provided a dedicated micro irrigation fund of rupees 500 5000 crore 
in uh, you know in partnership with uh, uh, nabard that is national bank for agriculture and rural development with application of mi saving of irrigation water is estimated to be to be of the range of 20 to 48% average increase in crop productivity is about 40 to 50% saving in fertilizer varies from 7 to 20 40% overall income enhancement of farmers in the range of 20 to 60% irrigation cost reduces by 20 to 50% and electricity consumption at the same time reduces by about 30 to 40% recently uh, uh, you know a few weeks ago we had a meeting with ministry of agriculture and mo ministry of agriculture is coming up with a new initiative to bring additional 10 million hectare uh, area under micro irrigation in next 5 years so this mi will be supplemented with fertigation also to promote judicious use of fertilizers and this you know temperature is to be covered in uh, next 5 years and uh, top-up subsidy plus all handholding will be provided by Ministry of Agriculture for this purpose. Large-scale migration has been successfully implemented at told by Mr. Jain in Bamthali lift irrigation project in Karnataka. Madhya Pradesh, they have taken up two major irrigation projects. Each, you know, uh, the command area is more than one lakh hectare. You know, that is, uh, uh, that is Mohanpura uh, multipurpose, Mohanpura micro irrigation project and Kundalia irrigation project. Those projects are under implementation and maybe in a few years those projects will be covered. Sachar. So these are, Sachor is again an example where you know Narmada waters are diverted from uh, Sardasa River Dam and it is taken to uh, you know water deficit area of Sachor area of Rajasthan and that kind of development is being taken place. Madhya Pradesh we have seen recently in an interaction with Madhya Pradesh they have identified roughly about 150 irrigation projects entirely micro irrigation based with a total potential of roughly about 34 lakh hectare and they will be you know and at a cost of roughly about 1.3 crore, uh, lakh crore rupees so that those projects are also in the pipeline what we have seen is that so far micro irrigation is in few selected states only if uh, we we take those states like karnataka ap gujarat uh, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, etc. But it has a small, little presence in the state, in the you know, in the vast Gangetic plains where we have large irrigated areas like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, and West Bengal. So basically, these micro irrigation facilities are to be you know are to be are to be provided in those areas also. We have to make penetration in those areas also. In large micro irrigation projects, what is normally seen is the major component of those projects like construction of headworks, you know, the associated uh, land acquisition, RNR works, that can be used, that takes a lot, lot of time and resources. Whereas, you know, uh, providing water in no micro irrigation system, that doesn't take much time. So, therefore, one more initiative, the you know, we will be taking is that we have a large number of existing irrigation projects which we have commissioned from 30, 40 years ago. And those projects that those projects badly needs, you know, uh, uh, some kind of modernization. We call it extension, modernization, and you know, the ERM project, extension, uh, renovation, and modernization project. So in those projects, we want that certain area, 10, 15, 20 percent of those command area, existing command area, which is having flood kind of irrigation system, existing system, that should be converted to micro irrigation so that the coverage should extend, you know, across India and the uh, we have targeted to achieve 10 MHA in next five years that can be achieved. So with that, I hope that uh, this uh, webinar, uh, you know, this uh, thing will be uh, very, very useful for all the participants. And I wish all the success of this webinar. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jain and Mr. Haldar for providing an overview of the progress of micro irrigation in, the, in India, which is, a, which is an example which other uh, countries may also like to follow uh, because the water shortages in agriculture are a, are a universal uh, kind of uh, phenomenon and uh, using the more and more efficiently the, the scarce natural resources is the need of the uh, Just to clarify, uh, there were certain units used uh, by Mr. Jain and Mr. Haldar uh, in India and those are like you know, when, when they when they say crores basically that means 10 millions and means one crore is 10 millions and then lakhs is like 100,000 
so so just for the, our international audience this uh, this way they can uh, they can see the, the relevance of, of the of the finance is being involved and uh, and, and, uh, and presently the uh, one us dollar is about uh, 75 rupees so so you can you can see the kind of investments that are that are being discussed over here so now uh, we are really happy that we have uh, dr felix renders uh, our uh, president icid and also chair of wasad the, the water scarcity and agriculture group that has been established by fao and doing a pioneering work in in various uh, developing countries uh, he is also a, a person of the modern irrigation systems he is actually taking a course in uh, in the uh, in uh, in Delft, uh, for the for the micro irrigation and, and other other systems and he is an authority on the subject so we will be extremely happy and we'll be grateful for listening to him on the keynote address on this occasion of the launch of the micro irrigation web course so i will invite dr renders to kindly give his keynote address thank you very much uh, mr secretary general and uh, the moderator for this uh, launch of the international certificate course on micro irrigation systems i trust you can all see the uh, the screen yeah yeah we can see so now i must just uh, get uh, my screen back okay there you go um, so you see the first screen, and uh, then you, good, uh, my talk this morning uh, is micro-irrigation for modern agriculture, the gateway to success, and uh, you will agree with me that the micro-irrigation market is a growing market in terms of applying the water efficiently uh, to the crop. So in my talk, I'll have some introductory remarks. I will look uh, at the international basis in terms of water irrigation and then smart irrigation and then uh, some closing uh, remarks. So, uh, in terms of the um, introduction, just to give you some background, the International Commission on Irrigation and Drainage was established in 1950, and we are now celebrating our 70th uh, anniversary. So, on the 24th of June, 2020, was the 71st year of foundation of the International Commission on Irrigation and Drainage. So the main vision and mission of ICID is to promote sustainable agriculture water management to achieve a water secure world free of poverty and hunger through sustainable rural development. And of course, irrigated agriculture together with uh, drainage uh, is our main focus. And we got a network of membership throughout the world of more than 75 countries representing more than 70% of irrigated agriculture. And we have set for ourselves goals. Uh, six major goals, and you'll see in uh, number one is enable higher crop productivity with less water and energy, uh, be a catalyst for change in policies and practices, facilitate exchange of information, knowledge, and technology. And that is precisely what we are doing today in terms of the launch of this very first uh, course on micro irrigation. And then you will also see uh, goals number four, five, and six, where six is also to facilitate capacity development. And I believe everyone that has registered for this online course, uh, that they will also uh, 
enhance their knowledge and design capabilities. So the International Certificate course on Microirrigation Systems, as you know, has been organized by the International Commission on Irrigation and Drainage, together with the National Water Academy of the Central Water Commission. And uh, we also knowledge uh, our, friend, our knowledge partners in terms of Jane Irrigation Systems Limited, as well as Netafim Irrigation Private Limited. So thank you very much to them that are joining us. And ICID, together with the companies and the producers, obviously that is where the success lies. And of course, water is the binding factor. Water that is uh, really the essence uh, to grow crops. Now, if you want to look at water, you will see the agricultural water used by country in cubic kilometers per annum, how it varies throughout the world. So wherever you are in the world, uh, you can see what is the volume that has been utilized. Just to give you an indication, there, uh, India, uh, the red one, uh, they are utilizing in the excess of 685 cubic kilometer per annum. And uh, that is very important in terms of how we utilize that water with what type of irrigation system. So when the well is dry, we will know the worth of water. Benjamin Franklin, a previous president of the United States of America, once said that. And I think many people are experiencing that uh, through various parts of the world. So two thirds of the world population will be affected by water shortages by the year 2030. And the global scarcity, you will see uh, big parts of Africa, the Middle East, and also parts of uh, Asia, including India, will have less than 1,000 cubic meters per person per annum by the year 2030. So it is important that we must realize uh, and work good with our water resources because water is the key to food security. Water is not just for primary production. Water for agriculture connects us all together and we need to be more water smart. If one look at the region-wise arable and permanent crop areas of the world, ICID kept records of this statistics, and you will see uh, in the world 1,533 million hectares are being cultivated. And in terms of irrigated agriculture, uh, we are irrigating in the region of 300 million hectares. A slow growth from 1950, and um, today we are irrigating in the region of 200, uh, 300 million hectares. But you'll see on the bottom right, there is a curve, uh, but I will enlarge it. In terms of the world irrigated area, hectares per thousand people, that there is a decrease in terms of the hectares. In 1980, it was approximately 47 hectares per thousand people, and it is decreasing towards uh, 42 uh, hectares per thousand people by the year 2020. So if you look in international basis, water in the world, we know there is limited water, fresh water available for us to utilize. First of all, 2% uh, of the water is in the polar ice caps, 97% is in oceans, and only 1% is available for use. So part of the fact or the that impact on the water availability is of course the growing populations and if you look at the different variants it is predicted that by the year 2050 we will reach 
9.7 billion people. And of course, uh, we need food and food uh, to produce that you need water. And of course, uh, the domestic water supply must also be in place. So with our water resources, we do not have more uh, or less. Uh, it is a matter of we got the same amount of water that need to cater for more uh, people in the world. And the areas of physical and economic water scarcity, you can see uh, especially the little or no water scarcity, the blue parts, but then the uh, color one, like the physical water scarcity, uh, the, the orange parts where that will start to happen in parts of the world. So the availability of fresh water, very interesting. If you look at the cubic meter per capita per year, uh, you will see the dark blue colors are the countries with more than 50,000 cubic meters per capita per year. So parts of South Africa, uh, there in uh, North Africa, Egypt, those places, India, Middle East, they got less than 1,700 cubic meters per person uh, per year. And of course, if one look at the water, how it's been utilized all over the world, uh, most of the water is either by rain or snow melting, coming from the mountains, filling up dams, distributed uh, uh, through networks. And agriculture in the world utilized 70%, industry 23%, and domestic 8% of that water. So in terms of the global fresh water withdrawal, you will see the green parts is mostly agriculture widely dominant. Uh, so Africa, uh, Middle East, India, Australia, uh, Asia, mainly agriculture dominant. And they depend on water. And if one look at the water requirements for food production, from 1960 going forward to 2050, where we need to produce more than 50% more food for the growing populations. You will see by the year 2050, we need to increase our water requirements uh, for food production from a present, uh, say, 7,000 cubic kilometers per year uh, to approximately 9,000. Uh, cubic kilometers per annum. Coming to irrigation, there are various technologies available uh, on the international uh, market in the different countries, uh, but rain-fed agriculture still plays a significant role in food production. And you will see 1,233 million hectares are being cultivated where they are depending on natural rainfall uh, for water uh, to produce food. But irrigated agriculture is practiced on 300 million hectares uh, throughout the world. And uh, you can see rain fed 80% and irrigated agriculture only 20% of the area. But that 20% produce close to 50% of the food uh, in the world. And the Food and Agriculture Organization, they are maintaining also statistics with uh, the global map of irrigated areas. And you can see areas where uh, that is equipped for irrigation, uh, India, China, uh, South America, America, and uh, then small parts of Asia and Europe. But India and uh, China, of course, the big role players uh, in the excess of 60 million hectares uh, in each country that are being irrigated. So worldwide coverage of irrigated agriculture, you'll see sprinkler irrigation is only 38 million hectares of that 300 million hectares. And that is about 13%. Gravity is still the biggest part, 244 million hectares. And then, of course, micro-irrigation, you can see 18 million hectares. 
6%, uh, but that is a growing uh, market in terms of application of that uh, method. So the purpose, as we know, of irrigation system is to apply the desired amount of water at the correct application rate and uniformly to the whole field at the right time with the least amount of non-beneficial water consumed or the losses and as economically as possible. And I believe this is what uh, in the next three months will be lectured by our uh, partners uh, and uh, they will also take you through the different routines, how to do it properly. But it is also important uh, to look at the management of the water. So very good agricultural practices together with uh, engineering design also need a good management principles that must be in place. Now, irrigation studies and research over many years on the techniques of flood, sprinkler, mechanized and micro irrigation contributed tremendously to the knowledge base of applying irrigation methods correctly. And many people contributed to innovative technologies over uh, centuries. Uh, going back to 1933, Orton Englert, he invents the first impact sprinkler to water his orange grows in Glendora, California. And that is a picture of the very first uh, sprinkler, impact sprinkler. And in the late 1940s, after World War II, rotating impact sprinklers with portable aluminium and light gorge steel pipes found its way to the world market, different forms, different uh, types. And the first center pivot was invented by a farmer by Mr. Zybeck from Nebraska in 1949. And the first marketable product was available in 1953. On the left hand side, you can see the very first pivot. And then of course, the modern day center pivots. Now the early history of micro irrigation uh, started really with the advent of modern plastics during and after World War II in the 1940s, when major improvements in drip irrigation became possible. Plastic microtubing and various types of uh, emitters began to use in greenhouses of Europe and the United States. And drip irrigation was uh, formally used in ancient times by filling buried clay pots and with water allowing the water to gradually seep into the soil. Something that is at present also being researched and looked at as a possible way of creating a new generation dripper with clay. Uh, modern drip irrigation began its development in Germany in 1860 when researchers began experimenting with sub-irrigation using clay pipe to create combination irrigation and drainage systems. Then in 1913, E.B. House of Colorado State University succeeded in applying water to the root zone of plants without raising the water table. And then perforated pipe was introduced in Germany in the 1920s and in 1934 by O.E. Roby, experimenting with porous canvas hose at Michigan State University. But agricultural irrigation development rapidly expanded worldwide and novel products uh, such as drip irrigation, microsprayers, and mechanized irrigation system also found their way to the world. So it was only in 1955 first experimented, but in 1959, when a new technology of drip irrigation was introduced in Israel by Simka Blas and his son Yeshayahu, where they developed and patented the first practical surface drip irrigation emitter. And the microsprayer, interesting enough, concept was developed in South Africa, my home country, and not to irrigate crops, but to contain the dust on the mine heaps. And from here, from the drip, from the microsprayers, more advanced developments took place to use it as a method to apply water to mainly agricultural crops. 
So a lot of work has been done by researchers, by innovators. And uh, if one look at this drip ir uh, irrigation evolution, evolution from the early start from uh, Blas, that is him in the picture, towards the more uh, compensated drippers uh, that is now being produced by various companies all over the world and utilized by our designers uh, and to the benefit of our farmers. So if one look at smart irrigation technology, uh, there's a lot of information and things happening. But uh, with this online course, which is mainly micro with drip, microjet, and micro sprinkler as a basis, where we are utilizing uh, drip irrigation uh, to apply water close to the root uh, zone of the crop that it can be utilized with all the high technology. The same with uh, micro uh, and micro sprinklers different technologies that are being utilized to apply the water correctly and sufficiently to the water. Uh, as I've said, micro-irrigation, uh, ICID are doing surveys uh, continuously, and the use of micro-irrigation in the world over the past 39 years. We started with this in 1981, when there was only 436 hectares or 1,000 hectares uh, under uh, micro-irrigation. And you can see it grew to 2020 to more than 18,000 uh, or 18 million uh, hectares. Uh, so the percentage increase over the last 39 years is more than 4,023% that took place. So that is significant in any terms, in any type of irrigation system uh, that are being utilized uh, in the world. And you can see the graph from 1981, how it grew in terms of application, applying the water uh, to the crop. And of course, uh, coming with the electronic age, with different controllers, different uh, computers controlling water, uh, digitization, the fourth industrial revolution, uh, the future to process information into a digital format by generating a series of numbers that can be used for food production improvement, from the planting uh, to the weather data systems, to the farm uh, management uh, with the uh, irrigation system, all integrated in terms of how are we doing uh, to apply the water effectively so that we can increase our food production and also the water productivity in terms of the yield per cubic meter of water produced. And then just uh, for interest, uh, there's also a development that started in 2010, which is called mobile drip irrigation, where the normal drip irrigation is combined with center pivots, where that is then a mobile drip irrigation system. So it is combination of mechanized irrigation with drip irrigation. So the benefits of managing the system together with the efficient application of water uh, is of great importance. And these different designs, how it's been done, and uh, that is also then looking at uh, the application on a variable rate methodology where water can be applied according to the soils, according to the crop uh, plants per hectare and uh, apply the water correctly. So there's uh, modification on center pivots with controllers uh, that then uh, will draw the dripper lines behind the pivot and applying the water. And you can see the length of the drip tubes at, at two pressures. Uh, so if a pivot is uh, around 400 meters in length, uh, the length of the dripper with uh, 100 kilopascals will be in order of 12 uh, meters. Drippers are spaced uh, 75 millimeters, but it is not the normal dripper that uh, we um, have uh, available at present moment. It's a special type of dripper that can be drawn on the soil surface 
and then apply the water uh, to whatever crop is being planted. So in closure, a lot of technologies, a lot of uh, new innovations, but the essence is that we are applying the water effectively and efficiently with that equipment. And we know that water is the key to food security. Water is not just for primary production. Water for agriculture connects us all together. And we need to be more water smart. We need to apply the knowledge that we are going to learn over the next three months in terms of micro-irrigation, how to uh, transform and to have a modern agriculture, because that is the gateway to success. I trust uh, that with this uh, short course, or not short course, this online course, that you will learn uh, from our partners because micro-irrigation succeeds and su is successful and it depends on the correct choice, the optimal design and proper operation and maintenance practices to effectively ensure that available water resources are utilized effectively. And you will see there is the words of correct choice, optimal design, proper operation, and then of course maintenance. And that is what will happen the next three months in terms of this uh, online course on micro-irrigation. So with that, uh, I thank you. And I trust that everybody will enjoy the learning uh, experience uh, through this online course with this international certificate course on micro-irrigation system that is being organized uh, in partnership uh, with a number of uh, companies as well as the uh, Water Commission uh, uh, in India. So I thank you. Thank you, Dr. Felix, for a very enlightening uh, lecture. And, uh, and, and that was a very informative lecture on, on looking at the new horizons that are available for us in developing the micro education systems. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now we will have uh, remarks uh, by engineer Ashok Kumar Khaya, our partner and chief engineer of National Water Academy under, under Central Water Commission, uh, with whose uh, interaction and inspiration we, we got into developing this course and in implementing the course. So I will uh, invite uh, Mr. Khaya to give a brief remark. Are you going to make any presentation? Uh, will you be making any presentation, Mr. Uh, no, sir. The, just uh, oral submission. Okay. Uh, good afternoon uh, uh, and uh, good morning, of course, uh, according to respective uh, time zones of the uh, participants. Uh, engineer uh, Felix Renders, uh, President ICID. Uh, engineer uh, R.K. Jain, uh, uh, Chairman uh, Central Water Commission. Engineer uh, uh, A.B. Pandya, uh, Secretary General ICID. Engineer S.K. Haldar, Member uh, Water Planning and Project CWC. Engineer H.K. Burma, uh, Executive Director ICID. Dr. Uh, uh, Soman, Chief Agronomist uh, from Jain Irrigation Systems. Uh, Engineer Ramdas uh, Batalwar uh, from Netafim. And all the very experienced and learned uh, faculty for this program and uh, dear participants. Uh, I am uh, actually Chief Engineer of uh, National Water Academy, which is uh, part of uh, uh, Central Water Commission, one of uh, its uh, unit for the training and capacity building. And I am really very happy uh, today to be part of this uh, webinar on uh, rationale for water saving in agriculture. Uh, on the occasion of launching of uh, international certificate course on uh, micro irrigation systems. Uh, basically, uh, prior to heading this uh, academy, uh, which is a center of excellence uh, under CWC, uh, uh, we are providing uh, uh, training and capacity building for water resources uh, professional. I was a director in uh, climate change directorate uh, in uh, Central Water Commission, and uh, there I worked for around uh, seven uh, long years. 
and during uh, my tenure as director uh, uh, government of india uh, drafted and uh, launched the national water mission and one of the very very important and ambitious uh, uh, goal of national water mission was uh, to improve the water use efficiency by 20% as uh, uh, chairman sir and uh, member dolupian we already uh, uh, informed that the water use efficiency particular of surface irrigation systems is uh, very low in uh, uh, india uh, and i i think that that is actually the world over uh, the uh, situation is the same so there was uh, and since the uh, uh, irrigation sector is uh, largest uh, consumer uh, of the water so with the low efficiency there was maximum chances of uh, saving the water by improving the efficiency in the irrigation systems themselves and uh, uh, when i was uh, working on a strategy paper particularly for this uh, goal uh, to improve the water use efficiency by 20% came to know that uh, uh, around 50% uh, 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 water use efficiency in water application itself can be improved by adopting or changing switching from uh, flood irrigation systems to uh, micro irrigation systems and there were uh, various examples uh, uh, for that just prior to uh, that period uh, 2009 10 uh, a program was launched uh, that was called uh, farmers participatory action research program that was of course a pilot but uh, in that program government of india and ministry uh, they funded uh, uh, research initiatives by the various universities or uh, uh, academic institutions to take their research from the lab to the field farmers field itself and then uh, to showcase uh, uh, whatever they are researching in their uh, in their field in in their institutes uh, in the field of farmer and then uh, they show to the farmer and the nearby uh, community farming community then how it is actually the changing uh, uh, their uh, uh water use or productivity not only the water productivity but the food productivity and finally the farmers income that was very successful of course it uh, couldn't be up scaled uh, but that was very successful and that showed that how these practices are actually uh, increasing the water use efficiency in 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 the uh, field of farmers and uh, many of them uh, became uh, uh and, and, and they try to adopt as per their own uh, financial conditions and others uh, these uh, practices now uh, at that time i was uh, actually on the policy framing side and uh, doing uh, all the uh, preparing guidelines and other things now i am here as, uh, as head of national water academy uh, which is providing uh, training and capacity building and i am feeling very uh, happy uh, that uh, uh with a very <coughs> a small uh, initiative uh, uh pandya sir uh, has uh, taken up uh, this uh, uh, initiative uh, uh, very further and uh, in in uh, actually practically if you see that it is not a very large time because uh, we discussed uh, this in uh, perhaps uh, uh, may uh, in the month of may and uh, uh, during this uh, period 3 uh, 4 months period a very hectic uh um, work was uh, done by verma uh, sahab and uh, pandya sahab and uh, uh, later on uh, gen irrigation and net of him uh, also joined and uh, certainly as uh, chairman sir pointed out that uh, they are very uh, important for this uh, project because they are having the uh, much needed uh, field experience such uh, programs are uh, a little bit deficient when uh, you can't show them uh, in the field uh, um, uh, in, in a working model or in the field setup but that uh, has been uh, taken care of largely by preparing the uh, videos and uh, uh, write ups uh, so that uh, the, the participants will have the experience of uh, field also uh, this is actually the full fledged program uh, on micro irrigation uh, in uh, nwa we are uh, uh, conducting various programs where in uh, micro irrigation is one part of a, a whole a whole uh, program uh, and uh, in last uh, Uh, 20 years in uh, around uh, more than 32 training programs, uh, we have introduced the micro irrigation techniques to uh, various uh, participants, and uh, <clears throat> there were uh, uh, all the aspects were uh, uh, were uh, exposed to them. 
but nevertheless this is a certificate course and international certification has got a uh, got a big meaning uh, we are in uh, discussion with the uh, icid to um, uh, to uh, take up uh, further uh, more courses uh, uh, particularly uh, uh, because of this pandemic situation we are finding that uh, our reach has uh, grown uh, very exponentially in fact uh, uh when uh, on an average we were uh, uh, imparting training to around 1100 or 1200 beneficiaries or participants now in uh, four months itself uh, we have crossed a uh, uh, number of uh, 5000 uh, uh, beneficiaries because now the reach is uh, very wide and we are conducting all kind of program means uh, not only the um, uh, uh, mass awareness program but uh, on the technology side, uh, flood forecast uh, modeling or on QGIS, uh, uh, watershed modeling or uh, 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 mapping of irrigation assets, flood uh, management assets. So, so all kind of uh, program are being conducted and uh, I'm in touch uh, with the uh, uh, Secretary General sir, so, so that uh, we can uh, uh, further extend these programs which we are conducting in NWA to the uh, uh, to the bigger community, uh, including uh, ICID. Uh, sir, I am uh, thankful uh, to ICID, uh, Generation and uh, NetAfim and uh, our uh, learned and uh, experienced faculty for uh, uh, wholeheartedly joining uh, this course and imparting uh, knowledge uh, to not only to the Indian uh, 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 professionals, but to the uh, very large uh, professionals uh, across the world. And I think uh, it is uh, more than uh, near about 180 participants uh, uh, right now in this uh, very uh, first course, which I think that uh, it is a very, uh, very encouraging uh, for the future course uh, to be taken up. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Khalia. Uh, it was indeed a good overview of uh, what uh, NWA is doing and then uh, the relevance of this course. Uh, now I will uh, request Dr. P. Soman, Chief Agronomist from uh, Jain Irrigation Systems Limited, uh, for a brief uh, remark uh, on his part. Are you going to make a presentation? Uh, will you be making any presentation or, or you will be only? Please unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. It is muted from your end. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, first, I, on behalf of Jain Irrigation, I should say uh, thank you uh, for um, including us also in this um, uh, wonderful event uh, of today, as well as in the training program. Yes, uh, we, where we can share uh, some of our um, field experiences in actually maintaining the um, supplying, maintaining and educating the farmers so that the correct use of um, micro irrigation will happen in the uh, in india and in the world at large i mentioned actually um, as a starting which i got is muted for anyway uh, doc engineer felix renders the president the uh, dr pandya the general secretary of icid and uh, dr jain from central water commission and the uh, national um, water academy and my colleague uh, ramdas metalwar from the uh, from what probably we would like to uh, from our side want to say is that um, for many of the people who are not familiar with the micro irrigation that's a drip irrigation or spring drip irrigation sprinkler probably is easy to understand people may have seen it while at least sitting in a bus and passing through the road but micro irrigation when it comes to drip irrigation happening right closer to the field level or the soil level is actually not can, cannot be observed from a distance. Uh, in India, of course, it's a long history of the last uh, 30, 35 years why this um, technology has um, entered India by traders bringing materials manufactured in other countries and then trying to give them to the farmers without educating them. 
So there was an earlier phase that education is what important. That's the point I'm making. In the earlier phase in India, what happened is that many of the uh, the entire concept of micro irrigation or drip irrigation was um, misunderstood, and the farmers were uh, probably taken for a ride. And so there was a phase. People thought this is not for India. This is for countries overseas, like Israel, USA, or Australia. From that change, from that stage, when drain irrigation came into the into the scene, we realized that it's just because the farmers are not made to understand what it can do. This is a very powerful tool. Micro irrigation, drip irrigation is a powerful tool because they did not know how to operate it or because they did not know how to maintain it their initial attractions and enthusiasm got wasted and then people started coming and talking about it as something some traders want to make money off this is the sad state of affair so but then it changed now over a long period of time 30 35 years it has changed now now farmers demand for drip irrigation systems they know how to operate it they know how to maintain it they are not worried about the saline water they are not worried about the what the universal complaint about the drip irrigation system clogging they are not worried about it they know how to tackle it actually so this is a long term interactions and uh, training and the capacity building of the farmers whether they are big farmers land, land large landholders or small farmers or with uh, one one or two hectare so that happened in india and i'm very happy that icid took this topic for training so that this process we went through in india can be shortcutted it can be made in a smaller uh, time period for other countries where it is equally important that drip irrigation should be uh, adopted in the um, scenario of um, water being not available for sufficiently not available for agriculture that's first part of it the second part is that the benefits a lot of people talk about benefit it saves water it increases the productivity it's, it's all right it increases the water consumption efficiency or what we call the irrigation efficiency we all know that actually how it happens actually but this happens only if the physical system of the micro irrigation that is the plastic tubes the drippers the filters and the pump etc is at equally supplied with the knowledge the knowledge of irrigation scheduling very very important otherwise farmers use it run the micro irrigation system for eight hours just like they run the flow irrigation system and they uh, overfeed the crop with water this happens they may not know how to use it for fertilizer application so this this is what i call the software part of micro irrigation the software part and the hardware which is the system per se have to be married well and then we present it to the farmers this is exactly what gain irrigation over the years have done we might have by now trained about uh, four to five million farmers and almost every year we are doing about uh, 300,000 to 400,000 farmers bringing them, bringing them to our training center or our people traveling to them to their places and training them so this is a very key and i'm very sure many developed countries i happen to work in many developed countries uh, not only in india when i say for example when i talk about uh, the drip irrigation in nigeria or ivory coast or zimbabwe or th th this is the what mostly is required the knowledge the knowledge transfer otherwise what would happen is people use this as a simply a conveyance system then the whole purpose of investment into the micro irrigation system phase now micro irrigation when appropriately used increases water productivity and energy productivity in other words it produces more yield with a lesser water use more yield with a lesser energy use more important i just give an example banana in india is one of the one of the largest micro irrigated crop and the water productivity under drip irrigation is about 7.4 kg per meter cube of water in a flood irrigation or furrow irrigated situation you get only about 5 kg so there is an increase in water productivity now let, let us look at the same banana production in terms of energy utilized for pumping there is about 28.6 kg banana you produce per kwh per unit of electricity that's very interesting in drip irrigation you will get only about 7.2 kg the same 
banana varieties produced and uh, allowed to grow with the furrow irrigation. So this is the key. You have a nice technology, but it is a bit of knowledge intensive technology, but if, when it is applied properly, everybody benefits. It's a win-win situation. The country benefits because energy is not used, is saved. Natural resources benefits because water is saved. And the farmer benefits because he gets higher income and uh, higher return for his investment he made. Fortunately, this uh, work training is happening from, in a way of speaking from India to the world. It is true also. India has the largest area under micro irrigation right now compared to any other country in the world. We have more than 10 million hectare under micro irrigation in India. And we have another totally about 59.6 million hectare area available totally for micro irrigation adoption. This is the latest data. But if you add a rice drip irrigation as the latest uh, technology which we have developed, this figure of the total micro irrigable area will go up. Certainly, because many of the estimates do not consider rice and wheat, etc., in their conservations. So, what I'm trying to say is that drip irrigation is a technology when understood and utilized, can be used for any crop, any part of the world, but the system provision has to be, or the investment in the system has to be supported by supported by technical knowledge. That is how. Micro irrigation probably is the only stage at which, apart from engineers, other people started going to the field and supporting farmers, agronomists. Actually, agronomists are there all the time, but agronomists have now a field job to do. That's what we do actually, to train the farmer to adapt his crop and cropping system to the, the system given to him, the irrigation system given to him is what is it? What is happening in the world for the propagation promotion and establishment of micro irrigation. And I once again thank uh, ICID for this opportunity. And uh, I would think this through this course, the ultimate result would be not that 180 people will get knowledge about micro irrigation. Those countries they are representing from would consider micro irrigation as a solution for their agriculture and irrigation problems. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Soman, for a very comprehensive view of, uh, of micro-education development. And uh, now we will have uh, brief remarks by engineer Ramdas Batalwar, uh, business head, NetaFim India, who is also our knowledge partner in the, in the uh, course. Thanks, sir. Uh, NetaFim, we found to be a proud and uh, uh, honor uh, to be a knowledge partner of this uh, distant learning course on micro-education. It is very amazing the first time this is happening in India and we are one of the knowledge partner. So definitely my uh, colleagues, Mr. Ajay, Mr. Tushar, Mr. Abhijit, uh, they already delivered their lectures, uh, submitted the lectures and I am uh, happy that uh, they will deliver uh, very knowledgeable presentations, uh, interactive presentations they already prepared. And uh, this session will go in a, a different uh, level and uh, one thing I want to add, so a small thing here. Now in India, this uh, drip irrigation or micro irrigation is taking different mode now. Till date, all the central government, state governments, they supported, uh, promoted micro irrigation uh, to the farmers. Those are uh, individual farmers. Those are having their own water source, either two well, bore wells like that. But last from a uh, few years, uh, this is changing now. The really, uh, the uh, water use efficiency is a big issue in case of canal irrigation or surface irrigation, where there was adoption of micro irrigation was very less. But fortunately, with the help of uh, Jane Irrigation, NetAFM, we promoted the micro irrigation concept in the canal command area. And fortunately, uh, we completed big, big projects. And very big projects are coming uh, uh, in the canal command area through water resource departments. Now, this is this this says that the adoption of micro irrigation coming into multiple folds now it requires different capabilities also for example designing one hectare two hectare requires certain capabilities but designing one lakh hectare fifty thousand hectare it requires different capabilities and fortunately this is the time now 
India uh, is taking big projects. As sir, uh, earlier sir told that Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Maharashtra, all these states they are coming with the big projects which are suitable for micro irrigation. Sometimes only uh, suitable for micro irrigation. Sometimes micro irrigations actually is a part of that project. So uh, uh, when we go ahead with this uh, uh, seminar, so we have to particularly Netafim will try to uh, explain about how the big projects can be implemented. What are the capabilities required? And basically, the water resource department is the key department uh, implementing such a big project. So we are capable. We can deliver good lectures and um, the knowledge in the seminar. And uh, at the same time, in the digitization that is uh, is coming up in agriculture also. How we can uh, monitor the fertigation, irrigation, weather controls, everything is now coming. That also will take care. So in coming uh, uh, presentation, you can see the new technologies, new concept which are coming under the micro irrigation concept. So I assure you from NetAfim that we will uh, deliver the required knowledge presentations to the uh, candidates, those that are attending the seminars, uh, the webinars. So uh, I'm confident uh, we'll take care of all the presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Batarwa. Uh, it was a it was a very reassuring uh, uh, presentation from you and Dr. Soman. And uh, and now we are having a few questions from our uh, participants. So they are appearing in in the chat box. And uh, I think uh, Mr. Is, Varma, you can is, help uh, the uh, presenters uh, regarding regarding these questions. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, there is a one uh, question uh, regarding uh, availability of the presentation. Uh, we like to inform all the participants that uh, recording of uh, this uh, webinar will be available uh, to all the participants who, are, who have joined the course and registered for the course. That will be as a part of introductory webinar that will be available along with the presentation. So that is the one thing. And second question is from uh, Mr. Theophil from Turkey. So that will take up uh, separately because that is about uh, membership and other issues that will take up separately. Yeah, any any other participants who would like to uh, ask yeah. questions, uh, they they are free to do so at this time. And uh, we'll be very happy that our, our our presenters will be able to provide you with the information that they can. There is one question from Mr. Praveen Kohle uh, saying that at present most of the irrigation is done through conventional canal irrigation system, which is not compatible for micro irrigation. Hence, it is requested to highlight the concerns and issues regarding modernizing irrigation infrastructure, which will support micro irrigation during this course. So, I'll request uh, uh, Dr. Soman and uh, Mr. Batavar to, to confirm that yes, we'll be taking that issue during our uh, course uh, as a part of uh, the uh, lecture material. Yes, as I explained earlier, uh, the community-based big uh, irrigation project is one of the subject uh, we are going to deliver in coming uh, sessions. Is there? Okay. Then, uh, as I told earlier, that presentation of uh, Dr. Felix along with the recording of uh, this webinar will be available uh, on our platform, Moodle platform, uh, to all the registered participants. So that is again uh, because there was one question from uh, one of the participants again about the presentation. So we'll, I will we assure you that it will be available. And then another uh, question is about: Are we going to have all lectures registered in the Moodle platform? Yes, we will gradually upload all the lectures on the Moodle platform, uh, around two to three lectures per week, so that uh, we can complete the course in uh, between uh, three to four months. So uh, then those lectures will be available to all the registered participants. So there are the, these are the questions or suggestions, and then if uh, any participant uh, is, uh, is having another uh, further more questions, they can raise this question through chat box.
uh, another question is about whether the use of solar pumps and aspects we delivered yes there is a one lecture on solar powered micro irrigation system so that lecture will be delivered as a part of the course and then uh, material uh, along with the presentation will be available to all the registered participants Uh, another, another question is whether uh, there is evolution for this course. Any exam quiz? It is yes. There will be evolution, uh, and then those who are interested in getting a certificate, they can participate in the evolution process. And there is a fee for that. Uh, once fee is paid, then uh, the, the, that is around hundred dollars. Once that fee is paid, then uh, uh, they will get the certificate. But this it will be on the basis of the evolution. Based on uh, quizzes, or uh, uh, webinar interaction, and uh, like that. I think, uh, I think uh, there are no more questions. So I'm going to. Then uh, uh, we'll just uh, briefly give introduction about the course part. Yeah. So. Um, uh, let me brief the participants uh, on on the course part we we are we have divided this uh, entire course which has been housed on the on the moodle platform and there is a specific site which has been already been informed to you uh, at the time of registration uh, the course has been divided into different streams uh, there is an introductory stream in which we will be discussing about the basics uh, of the of the water management and, and various other uh, other issues. Uh, then we we will be having a stream of agronomy. In the agronomy, we will be discussing about the soil plant water relationship, the scheduling, and the dynamics of soil and fertilizer movement, which are the fundamentals to planning of a irrigation uh, micro irrigation course. And then uh, there, there will be a larger module on the on the engineering. In which we will discuss the hardcore engineering part of the implementation of the micro irrigation project, starting with the MIS uh, design process uh, in respect of, uh, of, of drip, uh, etc. Then uh, we will also be discussing, as Mr. Patelwar said, we will be uh, discussing about the various scale level integrated agri irrigation projects, how to design them, how to implement them, what are the experiences in the field. There will be case studies on uh, on the small scale micro irrigation systems also, where where it will be possible to demonstrate and and, and understand how the small scale uh, initiatives of this nature can also be taken up. Then the pipe distribution networks, which are an essential component of the micro irrigation system, because these are all pressurized systems. So those areas will also be covered as a as a part of the engineering and and the solar. Uh, powered micro irrigation systems will also be covered as a part of the engineering. Then, in case of management, the capacity needs, the costing and economic analysis, and uh, various other community based uh, micro irrigation systems uh, and how to manage them will also be covered up as a, as a, as a part of the management. In all these uh, uh, areas, there will be webinars at, at frequent intervals in which we would invite all the participants to take whole attend participation and ask questions to the to the lecturers about what kind of uh, doubts they have and we'll try to clarify those doubts to the extent possible each of the lecture will be in form of a, a video in which the slide presentation with the voice over will be there in which you will be able to listen to them at, at their pleasure at your pleasure and then you will also receive the lecture notes in which you will get the greetings to all of you friends yeah and, and and in which you will get the get the write-up of this particular lecture which you will be able to keep for, for your future use so in this manner uh, we will we will try to give you the best possible uh, experience as much almost as good as sitting in a in a classroom and, and provide you with as much amount of information uh, that is possible. So I would request all those participants who have registered and they have not yet logged on onto the Moodle platform, uh, which is uh, which is the, our ICID Moodle platform. And uh, and please log in there, create your credentials there, and then uh, start looking at the various modules that are already available. 
a few modules, uh, uh, two lectures of uh, first module have already been implemented on the on the module, and then other uh, parts of the other lectures are also following through very soon. So this is an overview in which the we are going to run the course. Uh, if if there is any any need of any doubt, we are uh, the participants are free to email. And with that email, we will try to clarify the doubts. And if there are large number of doubts on a particular issue, we can we can even try to set up a small webinar and, and explain you the, the issue in a specific manner. Uh, for those participants who will register for the certification under this course, uh, they will they will have to pay a fee for which we will be enabling a, a payment uh, gateway. And uh, through that, you will be able to make the payment online. And uh, the participants who have registered for the uh, for the certification will receive certain assignments which they will have to complete in the in the scheduled time and then provide back to us so that based on those performance in those assignments and your responses uh, we will be we will be evaluating you and then accordingly we will provide you with a certificate at the end of the course. So this is a, in a nutshell we, how we are going to uh, organize and, and, and run this course. Um, we, yeah, there is one, one question, so we can as well uh, take that question. Uh, that uh, question is uh, some clarifications. Uh, uh, Mr. Fatma uh, Vasar has uh, raised uh, uh, some clarification. So they are saying that uh, during the webinar, they may be in, on engagement and they may be on tour and they may, be, uh, may not be able to attend the webinar. In that case, because webinar recording will be available uh, in the system, so they can go through the webinar and then this is not going to affect your uh, part of the certification because the webinar is to clear the doubts and then interact with the, directly interact with the faculty members. So in case somebody is not uh, available during the webinar period, they can see the recording, but they have to inform to us in advance that uh, they will be on uh, engagement and they will not be able to attend the webinar. So that will generally not affect uh, their uh, certification for part. Yeah. So now this video that you are seeing, uh, you will realize this is uh, how the lecture is going course. to be presented to you. Today, this uh, lecture, we, what we are going to cover is water resources planning for irrigation with specific reference to micro irrigation systems. Here, uh, what you would understand as we proceed that as far as uh, water requirement uh, for irrigation is concerned, there is a similar procedure whether we work out water requirement for conventional systems or for micro irrigation systems. Here I am. This is my brief introduction. So, as far as presentation sequence is concerned, the presentation covers all major consideration of water planning for irrigation, including, of course, those for micro irrigation systems. Various issues which are going to be able to cover in the presentation checking on resource availability, crop. So this would have given you an idea about how the how the course uh, would actually be delivered to you. So you will receive this link and 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 once you will log in onto the Moodle platform, you will see this link. You click this link and this video will be played. You can play and replay that video so you can attend the lecture multiple number of times at your own convenience. And then you can also study the lecture notes, which will also be as a part of this particular download. So, so this uh, this brings us uh, to an end. To, yeah. uh, there is another uh, query from uh, Deepa Thomas. Uh, she is saying that uh, she is not able to log in uh, because of certain problems. So we'll directly interact with her and then to sort out the problem. Why is, uh, where, where is the problem in login? Uh, because of some credentials issue and other thing. So we'll uh, separately uh, contact her. So this uh, brings us to the end of the of, of this inaugural uh, webinar on uh, the micro irrigation systems course uh, presented jointly by 
ICID, NWA, Jain Irrigation and Adaptive Limited. Mm. Uh, I am extremely thankful to uh, Dr. Felix Reinders for having spared his time and given a very valuable keynote address, uh, enlightening all of us about the overall mm. global water situation. Um, we, I am also thankful to Sri R.K. Jain, Chairman Central Water Commission, Sri S.K. Haldar, Member of Water Planning and Projects, who, in spite of their busy schedules, uh, gave a wholehearted uh, participation in the webinar and they were also inspiring us for, uh, for, for developing this course. Uh, I am also thankful to Mr. Kharia, Chief Engineer NWA, Dr. Soman, and uh, Engineer Ramdas Batalwar for their uh, participation. And, uh, and 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 the and the discussions uh, during the during the webinar, uh, and we will be working uh, closely together in in the future also. Okay. At the end, uh, yeah. yeah. At some point, clarification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is the, uh, some more uh, queries about the clarification of the course is there. So one is uh, uh, to know that um, assignment mode. So assignment will be based on the lecture. It, is, it will be after each lecture. It will not be, say, weekly or something like that. But it will be after uh, each lecture, there will be some assignment and quizzes will be there for each lecture that is separately. And uh, actual, about the actual duration, so we are planning this course to be complete to, in uh, basically uh, maximum four months. So that the time period is three to four months, including webinar and assignment, uh, uh, completion of assignment and quizzes and then uh, certification part. So we intend to complete this uh, in the next four months after the launch. Three, three to four months. Higher. So I think uh, next four months. now we have uh, no more questions. Yeah. So so we may we may conclude the webinar once again. I thank you all, all the all the presenters and all the <laughs> participants who joined us in the, in the webinar. And we will we look forward to having a very enriching experience uh, of for developing and, and delivering this course to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Present Felix, do you want to say something in the end? No, no, I said uh, all the best and uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Doctor Basu, sir, we are doing. 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 We are doing